Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today is Wednesday, hump day. <laughs> Happy hump day. I tell the kids that when I wake them up in the morning so they know they're on the downslide of the week. Um, today is the third week. Today makes three weeks since I've had, I believe it's called, Dor I just looked it up, dorsum rhinoplasty. I'll put it down here and it's considered minor rhinoplasty. And the reason is because I did not need, um, I didn't have a deviated septum, I didn't have any issues where I needed the bone broken, and I didn't have any issues where um, he needed to, you know, lift my nose. Everything that he did was inside my nose. Um, I'm gonna approach this like you haven't watched my videos before in case someone finds me from this video because I know when I was thinking about getting it done, I watched a lot of videos and read many, many articles, went to that Real Self website and read lots of stuff before I decided. So um, my nose was um, a little, you can look at my videos, and it was just a little bit too long and um, it kind of pointed down. And that did not really bother me until I smiled. Then it pointed more down and it just, I felt like, which my mom says, you know, when someone's talking to you, they don't think about that. And I realized that, that when in real life, I don't think it was as noticeable as it was like when I was up in the camera doing a tutorial. And you know, I'm my worst, you're your worst own, you're, you're your worst critic, your own worst critic. And, um, then, anyway, so it was too long and I felt like it pointed down. And with me taking pictures all the time for Instagram and YouTube, I just, it seemed like every time that was what the determining factor is if I liked the picture is if my nose was, I just didn't like the way it would dominate some pictures. And um, so I've never really thought about my nose at all until the past probably about the past three years, I would say. Um, I remember I thought about it when I had my eyelids done and I decided not to. I decided, oh, I've got, you know, my, my dad's nose, it's a German nose. I felt like it made me look different. A lot of people would ask me, you know, what my heritage was. I felt like it made me look just a little bit different, you know, and, um, you know, so many people said, oh, I love your nose and everything. So, but, in the last couple of years, I felt like it just kept, you know, they say that your nose and your ears keep growing. Well, I think that's a myth. I think what happens is, um, he said like the cartilage in your nose and probably in your ears too, I don't pay much attention to my ears, but um, he said the cartilage in your nose, just it kind of gets softer and it might just give a little bit. So I know, you know, a lot of people said, well, I thought you would never, you know, change your nose, you have your dad's nose. Well, the beauty of it is, it's still, because he didn't change anything on the outside of my nose, I feel like it really still is. And now it almost looks exactly like my mom's nose. It's so funny, we were at um, Easter dinner and it was John, Will, me, Brooke, my mom, and my dad, and we were talking about it. And um, John said, oh, you did have your dad's nose. I said, yeah, now I have mama's nose. And they, we all started laughing because it was so true. But I mean, it just, it seemed like every time someone drew a picture of me or someone said, you look like so-and-so, it was always big emphasis on the nose. And not that that's bad, but I'm just kind of telling you all these little things that added up to make my decision. And really, I had not even really made my decision until I went for my first consultation. And he just made me feel so positive about it. He said, oh yeah, you're a perfect candidate. He said, your nose is a little long for your face. And you know, plastic surgeons, they're real, you know, he was um, talking about my symmetry, talking about the slope of the ideal female nose and all this kind of stuff. And it just, everything he said, you know, I liked what he said. And um, he just felt so positive that I could get such good results and not really change the way I look. Like for instance, um, here, let me zoom in. I've got that little hole in my nose right there. That is like a birthmark. Um, it is has been there since the day I was born. So I do not, I've never looked at my face without that little teeny hole in my nose. It's like a little dimple. And um, so I wanted to be able to keep little things like that, that, that I am, you know, it makes me me. It's like, so I did not really want to change the whole 
look. I just, you know, when he said it would be a little bit shorter and um, a little bit, you know, not turned down and not as cartilagey on the ends. It was getting to where it was just so, just I felt like so much cartilage there on the end of my nose. So um, he said, okay, we'll set up a pre-op appointment and we'll go from there. So um, I set up my date and you had to put like, I think $600 down and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about money because I feel like that's, oh, FedEx just went by. I feel like money is a factor. And um, matter of fact, um, let me back up to the very night that I decided I wanted to have it done. And um, John and I had gone to the movies. It was Valentine's Day. And you know, I had been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and talking about it. And we were at the movies and one of my friends uh, texted me there and I went to take a picture of John and I to send to her at the movies. And I had to keep on, keep on, keep on taking the picture because every picture I took, I felt like Ziggy. I felt like my whole nose was taking over the picture. And I realized, you know, I was telling my mom that and she was like, well, that's just a picture, your picture, you know, and I know that. And so for those of you that aren't taking pictures like I am and, you know, YouTube it in your thing and you don't really care about that, then let, do let that be a factor that nobody notices that stuff when you're talking to them as much. But with that said, I did have people all the time telling me, um, you know, I won't go into who it was, but they, they would tell me I look like certain people and all those people. Like one time, this, I've only had this one time. One time a guy came up to me in the post office and said, you look, I know people tell you this all the time. And I was waiting for Suzanne Summers. And uh, he said, Barbara Streisand. And that was the first time I'd ever gotten that. And I was thinking, oh my gosh. I mean, my nose is getting big. <laughs> but anyway, that was just one time. But um, in, that night in the movies, I kept, you know, and John said, just go do it. You know, we got the money to do it. Just go do it. And <clears throat> I guess that was, you know, that helped me decide because, you know, anytime you have your husband's support, you know, it just helps. And... Oh, and he also said, and I had noticed this in the past couple of years, that I had a hump right there in my nose. And it had gotten, you know, as you get older, you lose more and more fat from your face. And it seemed like that hump had gotten more prominent. And he said he would shave down that hump and then um, trim some of the cartilage. And if you will go and look at the nose cartilage, there's lots of diagrams of it, like on Pinterest and even on Google. You can see how the, the cartilage comes up and it kind of goes like that. And then you have another piece right here. And said he said what he would do is he would go in and trim some of that cartilage right here and right here. And then that would take care of the, um, you know, it coming out too far. And then when you do another piece, it um, pulls it up and um, he said actually because it's so swollen now actually as it um, you know relaxes and the swelling goes down it will relax more and it might be just I don't know how much more it'll change since mine was um, minor but he said at least six months it'll be swollen and it'll keep on keep on changing but I think it might go down just a little bit um, and make it um, the you know, before it turned down, now it kind of goes up. It's got a perfect slope, the thing's gone, the bump's gone, and it will change. Like right now, it's very swollen. And last night, yesterday I was thinking, gosh, my nose hadn't hurt all day. You know, I felt so good thinking, you know, oh, it's, you know, really healing and because it does still burn a little bit. And especially it builds. By the end of the day, it usually is burning. And um, yesterday I was thinking, I even told John, my nose feels so good today. It's not burning. It's not hurting. And I went to kiss Will goodnight last night. And I did it. He didn't even move. But you don't realize how much you touch and bump your nose. And I did it. And oh, it is, it is that pain that you feel deep in your soul. I mean, and he looked at me like he did something wrong. And I was like, no, no, it's me. I did it. And it was just like, it it took a while, you know, it gradually went away, but it is still very sensitive. Now, when I first had it done, you could not, I mean, it was like, I didn't even want you to look at it. It was, you know, burning. And um, that's the best way I can describe it. It's like very, very localized pain. You can tell that it's, you can tell exactly where he worked. And um, 
it just burns like you were to get a burn from a curling iron or something. That is the feeling that it gives you. And so I do still, it's three weeks out. And I do still have a little bit of that, but not very much. Okay, so now let me back up. I, I was gonna make notes, but I feel like I ramble just as much as with notes. Um, so let me back up till we went to my consultation and that is where he kind of, he said he never operates on anybody without seeing them at least twice. So went to my consultation, you know, he, I had some more questions about, I just couldn't get over the fact that he was going to be able to go in my nose, make an incision, do all of that that he needs to do without any scars or any incisions on the outside. And I was like, well, what's gonna to happen to all that extra skin? And he said, the skin on the nose is very different. And I looked it up and it's called draping. And what happens is after he does it, the skin just goes right back. I mean, it just snaps, it adheres and drapes right back over your cartilage. And I just think that is so neat. I think that's like, you know, a miracle of nature. You know, it just goes right over and it doesn't feel like it's loose or anything. So um, then I think I had my consultation and then about a week later I had my pre-op and then I think about a week later I had my the um the rhinoplasty and um I had to be there at uh 12 o'clock I think my surgery was for one and it was just going to be for one hour he said it would not take very long and so of course I could not eat anything eat or drink after 12 which is you know per the normal and I got there and of course you wear something that's easy to take off and easy to put back on. Like so then you go, um, the doctor comes in and he makes um, marks and I'll have pictures for everything. So I will show you probably what I'll do. I, I'm not sure if I'll do it while I'm talking about it or if I'll do them at the end or both. But he did make marks, real quick marks on my nose. And then the anesthesiologist came in. Um, I had told him that last time when I woke up from my mastopexy, I had a mastopexy and a blepharoplasty, basically a boob lift and my eyelids done at the same time. And so last time when I woke up, I had my eyes covered and I was very, very nauseous. I was trying to throw up when I woke up. They were trying to give me crackers because you can't take your pain medication until you get something on your stomach. And I really didn't want to have to go through that again. So I told them that I, one, I faint easily, and two, I get nauseous. So the anesthesiologist put a patch behind my ear. Um, he said that this could, um, I could keep it on for three days and it would help me with any nausea from the medication, the pain medication, and it would keep me from getting, hopefully keep me from getting nauseous from the anesthesia. He said probably I would not have had that problem because I wouldn't have to stay under as long and I wasn't having as much done. You know, last time my surgery I think was, gosh, I think it was almost three hours and this one was just gonna be one hour. So um, they did that and then they got me, asked me all the million questions for anesthesiology. There was two of them, two guys. And then they took me back. I put on like a gown, or I had already put on the gown. And then they hook you up. And then before you know it, you just feel, you know, you're out of it. You don't know another thing. The next thing you know, they are waking you up. You know, John's there to pick me up. I didn't have my mom come out because um, I felt like it was so simple and I felt like John could handle it. Last time my mom dropped me off and John picked me up, but this time I just had John drop me off and he actually just went and got some lunch and came back. And then we came home and my mom got here shortly after we got home to check on me and she stayed with me for the whole afternoon just to make sure everything was okay. I had all my pillows, I had everything ready in the house. I had everything clean and everything ready. I had my pillows set up just like I wanted it because I knew I was gonna have to sleep, you know, sitting up for about two weeks. And um, that is for the swelling. Okay, when I came home, um, I just had, and they told me this at the pre-op appointment, because I didn't have any nose or bones broken or I didn't have any stitches or anything, I had no bleeding and I had no packing, no splint, none of that stuff that you see on, you know, the pictures and stuff. And that's why I really wanted to do this video because I did not 
see a lot of videos or read about a lot of cases that were like mine. And I felt like, you know, that was valuable because when you read about it, you're gonna get more of a horror story than I went through. So all I had was tape across my nose. I had it and it was tight and, you know, kind of firm feeling. And I read later that the tape is for swelling. So I'm not sure if that's it or not, but that's what I read. So it was like, um, you know, all across here, all the way down here, just the tip of my nose was sticking out. And um, she told me I might have like a drip you know, bandage if my nose was bleeding, or sometimes they'll put a drip bandage there because you'll have the feeling that your nose is dripping um, or your nose is stuffed up and they don't want you, heaven forbid, you do not ever want to just do like that, like you typically would if your nose is running a little bit because it just, whoo, just trust me, you don't wanna do that. So I was halfway expecting to have that, but I didn't. So of course I've got pictures of what I looked like when I first got home. And the most, I think the most bizarre or upsetting thing to my mom was my eyes looked funny. And they said that that was probably because, one, because I'd just been under anesthesia, um, but two, because of that patch, it makes your eyes really dilated, like you've gone to the eye doctor, and it just makes you, your, your eyes feel googly feeling. So I felt like I could barely open my eyes for a while. Now I ended up taking that patch off by, as soon as I saw that I wasn't gonna get um, nauseous, it was kind of bothering me, and um, I took it off, I think, on day two. Um, they'd already given me, I'd already gone and had my medications filled before I went. Um, they give you a suppository that luckily I never had to use um, for nausea, if you have nausea, and they give you um, an antibiotic that I had to take for a good while. Then they gave me Percocet for pain, which, I don't know, I never end up taking all of that and I never end up taking, I think it was two, it was the lowest dosage and you could take two every four hours. And I only did that, I think for the first day, maybe the, maybe the first 24 hours. And then what I usually do is I'll go down to one and then I'll just take Tylenol. But they don't want you to take anything with aspirin in it like Advil, Aleve or anything like that because they don't want you to start bleeding. I went and got this. These will be your best friend. Now, I started off with just regular Q-tips, but I fast realized that this would be the best. This is those safety swabs that you get for children. So these will be your best friend because they are real absorbent. So you can use the little part if you just want to. You'll have this feeling of wanting to clean your nose. Now, that doesn't happen until at about the third day and I don't know what happened to me if I ended up getting a cold or allergies. I think pollen is really bad here in North Carolina and it's really bad this year. I think it was allergies. So I constantly was having a runny nose and um, you know you can still take like an antihistamine or something to help dry you up, but this would help. And I don't know, it would just make me feel better to just feel like I got it clean and um, your stitches are in there, but they are not the kind that he has to take out. They're the kind that dissolve. You guys saw me on a week and a half. That first video I did on Friday, um, I it had just been a week and a half. Okay, so let me back up. So Wednesday's when I had the operation. My return post-op appointment was on Tuesday. That Tuesday, so not quite a week. And oh, I could not wait. I could not wait to get those tapes off of my face. They were driving me crazy because they had started um, lifting like right here and it tickled, constantly tickled, tickled, tickled my nose. So I finally got where I just clipped the ends off and um, they just, it made me feel somewhat claustrophobic. Like um, I kept telling the kids, I, I felt if anybody's watched SpongeBob, I felt like Mermaid Man. He has a big starfish on his face and it just, you know, I didn't go anywhere. I think I uh, took the kids to school because by Monday I was able to, you're able to drive as soon as you get off the pain medication. So at the post-op appointment, and I read this because you know I was constantly on my phone reading 
articles about people that had, you know, nose jobs and different things and what to expect. And I was so pleased, you know, that that's all I had. And I had barely any bruising. Um, you'll see on day three and four, I had a little teeny bit of bruising, like right up here and swelling. And it swelled so much that, you know, it was creasing around the bandage. And my mom came every day to check on me, even though John <clears throat> and Brooke took great care of me. There's nothing like your mama. There's just nothing in the world like a mama's love. And she just knew exactly what to bring me. She brought the kids stuff. She made a big um, pot roast with potatoes and carrots and lima beans and stuff like that. You know, good comfort food. And uh, brought the kids treats and um, came and sat with me while John went to the gym because John took that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off of work. So he was home with me too. My mom came every day and cooked for us and brought us stuff and sat in there with me. And um, so I had that little bit of swelling and I remember that didn't upset her, but I remember her saying it. And then that was it. I did not have any bruising or anything else. And then it came Tuesday, time to go to the doctor to get my tapes off. And when I had been reading, I read that when they take those tapes off that your nose will be real broken out and real yucky because your nose like produces a lot of oil. But so we go in there and he goes to take off my, the strips on my nose and they are, I thought it was just gonna go, you know, come right off. But what he's done is it's not just tape, there's like this special adhesive that they put on there too. So he had to really like get up under there and it really, you know, pulled off. And he took them off and it just felt like, I mean, you'll hear people say, I cannot imagine what it feels like when you have a true rhinoplasty and they take that packing out. I mean, I cannot even imagine because this felt so good. It felt like so free when he took those things off. And then he grabbed this little, like a little pad and opened it and he took off the adhesive. There was a bunch of adhesive left on my nose. And then we looked in the mirror and I had three huge pimples on my nose, which I never break out like that. And I mean, there was like one great big one there, one great big one on my nose and one over here. And I said, oh my God, I said, are those just bumps on my nose? And he said, yeah, that's very common. He said, um, the oil has been producing, he said, and um, that adhesive kind of just irritates your nose. And so a lot of people, when they take the bandages off, so when you get your bandages off, expect to look, I don't know, that was disappointing because I love the way my nose looked, but there were those great big bumps. So I took care of those, but they were still red and kind of raised. So you'll see that in the pictures. It took a long time for that one. And your nose is so swollen and sore, you can't really scrub it or do anything, you know? But um, it was to the point where it wasn't, I didn't feel like crazy looking or anything. I can remember that day going and um, getting something to eat. Now I had read that you might wanna have um, soft, easy to eat things in the house because it's true. Even with this little bit that I have, in the first couple of days, you're gonna have soft things, like that stew beef was really good because I only ate a few pieces of meat which were cooked down. We use a chuck roast, my mom and I do, that's what we use for our stew beef. And um, it was cooked down, but I loved like the potatoes and the lima beans and the corn, and then she does like a tomatoey base. And so that was easy to eat. Oh, and it took, I remember that day was the first day I went and got a salad. And after eating that salad, it did make it more sore because I guess just moving your you know, lip and stuff, it kind of irritates it. So make sure you have plenty of stuff in the house to eat that is easy to eat. And plus you need to eat to be able to take your pain medication. So um, just make sure that you have some good stuff. So that day, I remember I went and got a salad and I think I walked around H&M, did a few things and then went and picked up Will. The next day was the first day and I'll put the picture in here that I wore makeup. And you guys, I was so happy. From the minute, from that day on, I have never regretted it. I have been so happy. I love it. I just love, I feel like, 
and I know some of you are gonna say you like my old nose better, and I understand that because change is tough. But John loves it, Brooke loves it, Will, he doesn't care, he's a guy. And um, I just love it because I feel like it fits my face better. Um, I know it's gonna get better and better. It's gonna get um, less, it's gonna get more refined. That's what they said. He, and he even told me, he told me from the consultation. He said, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take off the tapes. He said, and you're gonna look at it and you're gonna see a little bit of difference. He said, the bump's gonna be gone. He said, but you're gonna think I didn't do much to the end of your nose. And you're gonna think, you know, was this worth it? He said, but um, as the swelling goes down, it gets more and more refined. And when I talked to him, when I got my tapes off, no, it was at the first, because after you get your tapes off, the next week you have another consultation. And um, when he took my tapes off, I asked him, could I wear makeup? Could I wear sunglasses? And all that stuff, and he said yes. Because I had not had the bone broken, I could wear sunglasses. So I think if you have the bone broken, I think you might have to wait on that appointment. And then you know, he told me um, that it would be more and more refined, and because he didn't do very much on me, about six months is what I could expect. I think it's like a year, up to five years. They say that it can change up to five years if you've had a full-on rhinoplasty. Now this is what I've been told and what I've read. So everything I'm telling you here is just from my experience. So I may say something different than what your doctor says. Definitely do what your doctor says because your case is gonna be different than mine. Um, going back to that first day I wore makeup, I felt like a million bucks and I knew it was gonna get better and better and I really, you know, felt good because everybody knows if you've ever had anything done, any type of plastic surgery, there is a couple of days, if not like a week, where you feel bad. You feel bad for spending the money. You feel vain. You feel like, oh, you know, why did I care? You feel like maybe you made a mistake. Um, you feel like, am I ever going to be normal again or, you know, you just have all these feelings. It's, a, it's kind of an emotional thing. I don't know if the anesthesia does that to you, but it takes a while to kind of get back. So that day was the first day I really felt like, oh, I'm so glad I did this and I was so excited. And, um, and I love it. So even after that, even after the drama, I've never regretted it, not one minute. And that is the main reason I wanted to do this video because um, I think, you know, I felt like, gosh, who gets a nose job at 47? You know, Lisa, you've lived with this nose your whole life. You know, don't be so vain. Don't worry about it. Who cares? But when John said to me that night, you know, do it. If it bothers you, do it. And I started thinking, you know, I, I hope I've got another 35 or 40 years left. And why not? You know, why not do it? And, or at least to go get a consultation and see, you know, if he'd have told me, mm, you know, I could do it, but it's probably not gonna change much. You know, you really, you've got a good nose and you really should just, uh, I really, you know, if, if anybody would have acted like that or if the doctor would have, or if he just said, now your nose is gonna look great, but you're gonna go through a lot, or, you know, I don't know, there could have been some things that would have turned me off. Um, but everything just kind of fell into place. Um, it was not the same doctor that did my eyelids or my mastopexy, even though it was in the same group. Um, I actually had contacted several people in this area, some that had worked there, some that um, I contacted one of my friends that works for Allergan, and she goes to all of the groups of doctors in this whole, um, all the way down to Myrtle Beach in this whole area. And then I talked to people that I knew had had it done. And so everybody pointed back to this doctor and this group, and um, I really, really liked him a lot. So from there on out, it has been wonderful. Now, every day gets a little bit better. Every day, I feel like I have more definition in my nose. Um, at first, I'm serious, The I could barely, like just touching this part right there, just the slightest touch was, it really hurt. 
so the touch has gotten better. Like at first it hurt to even touch down here. Now I can touch everything. And like when I put the Q-tip in my, to clean my nose, um, I have to be careful because there's still places in there where I can feel where the stitches were. Um, it doesn't hurt, like this part out here doesn't hurt. The only place that hurts is that center area. And um, now this, like, like pressure, like if someone were to, if I were to hit something like that, I think I would pass out. I mean, I told John it must be the equivalent of them getting kicked in the you know what, because I just can't even imagine. Like when I hit my nose last night, just barely on Will's, I don't even know where I kissed him. I probably kissed him on the cheek and I probably hit him on like the forehead or something. It really just, I mean, it just is one of those pains like you just have to stop a minute and just get yourself together. That's how it was. And this is, you know, three weeks out, but it isn't that bad. It really isn't. Okay, so now I want to address um, taking time off. They told me, um, I've read on most websites that two weeks is the amount of time that you'll need to take off for rhinoplasty. And I believe that is for a full on, you know, stents or packing in your nose, just a, a more basic rhinoplasty. If you are getting something done like me, where you're just having the, the end, the tip done, and then the nase, whatever, the bump, um, it really, a week would be early. Um, if you didn't care, like if you worked at a place where you didn't care what people thought and you were gonna tell everyone and you know, you were real comfortable, then a week would be good. If you cared what people thought and you really didn't want to advertise it and everything, I would take like a week and a half off, maybe 10 days. Um, if you have small children, ooh, I don't, I, it's gonna be tough for you to do because you can't lift things. I just started um, walking. I started walking the loop this week down at the beach, um, which is about four miles. My legs are killing me. Um, I, I can tell my, I'm just so out of shape, but I started doing my arm exercises last week. Um, but I, you know, I wouldn't run or do anything like that until probably at least three weeks. You know, definitely ask your doctor. Ask your doctor because that depends on you. You don't want to mess with the swelling or the bleeding or anything like that. And, um, but I would say a week and a half or two weeks is what I would take off. And if you have small children, it's going to be really tough. Um, okay, I wanted to also address something that I said earlier, um, having a nose, my nose done at age 47. Lots of people look up rhinoplasty before and after. Um, look it up on Pinterest and look it up on um, just Google and then hit images and go down. Look at how many people are 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s getting their nose done, which I realize some are, you know, probably had deviated septum or something like that. But and look at how good they look. You know, it's very, very common. Don't let people make you feel bad about it. Um, if you will look up celebrity rhinoplasty, I couldn't believe. I mean, Blake Lively, that made a big difference on her. Angelina Jolie, Jennifer Aniston. Um, I think Scarlett Johansson is supposed to have like the perfect female nose after she had hers done. Um, just, I mean, I cannot, and a bunch, uh, Ryan Gosling, a bunch of guys too had their nose done. Um, so very, very common and, you know, not big, you know, just a little tweak, you know, you don't have to have like some, you know, like, I don't want to say anybody's name, even though this person's a celebrity because some people, you know, get into stuff like that. Um, but there are some people, you know, it got to be real common to have that little upturned, like real pinched nose. Whoo, be careful. Just do like I did. I did not take one single picture into my doctor. He didn't show me anything. I mean, they did tell me on his Facebook I could look at all of his work. But um, what he told me is exactly what I wanted. I wanted my nose just not as long and not turned down and I wanted the bump gone. And in my opinion, that is what you should do. Try to just refine what you have because you don't want to look totally different. You want to be yourself. And you know, in a perfect world, 
I would just have my nose that I had when I was 18. But you know, it just changed as like everything else does as you get older. Um, so anyway, I hope I answered all your questions. Um, please leave any questions down below and I will do my best to answer them. And um, I appreciate all of your you know, compliments and all of your feedback and just you guys have given me so much support and I just appreciate it so, so much. And um, I guess I'll do a quick out for the day and I'll let you go. I'll be right back. Okay, so today I have on a Diane Von Furstenberg wrap dress and I don't know if you guys remember I bought this about a year ago, I think off of eBay and um, I bought it brand new. Um, and I love it, of course, you know why, with the lips on it. And it's just one of her traditional wrap dresses. I have, I think about three of these and I love them. And um, then the shoes I have on are my Ever Faithful Prada Slingbacks. I hope that you can see them. And um, then I'm carrying my, hold on, I get it. And I'm just carrying my black um, Balenciaga, which is, one of my favorite handbags of all time. Okay, I'll leave that light on. Last time I had it on, it was, my bulbs are those Edison bulbs that have that yellowish hue to them. And um, so I didn't, I didn't know, but maybe I should have had that on the whole time. So now you can see my nose. Okay, um, accessories I have on my, oh, I love this. This and the lightning bolt. I wore that the other day. Um, this is my Jenny Bird necklace, and it's fabulous. I love the way it hangs. It sits real flat. It says Jenny Bird on the back. And um, no earrings because I knew my hair was going to be over my ears. And um, I think that's it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. Um, and I will see you day after tomorrow on Friday. Bye-bye.